I admit there are rare exceptions, but for every Cisco proprietary protocol or service that we run into, there's what we call an industry standard, and that's an equivalent service that can be run on non-Cisco devices, because there are actually networks out there that have non-Cisco devices in them. Boo! But it's okay, we understand. For CDP, though, that industry standard is the Link Layer Discovery Protocol, LLDP. And there are more similarities than there are differences. There's one important command difference I'm going to show you live here in a moment, but even the commands are similar. LLDP is going to give you information on directly connected devices. They don't have to be directly connected Cisco devices, but in this lab they will be, because I've added a switch. Because not every Cisco router you run into is going to be LLDP enabled. So I've got a couple of switches here, and they're going to be chatting with each other, I hope. But LLDP runs at layer two, just like CDP does. Uh, you'll see the whole time here in a moment, the value is a little bit different, but just as with CDP, that is configurable. And the interface level commands are where the differences are. But right now, let's go ahead and dive on to the lab and run show LLDP. And actually, I've run it on both of these switches. And as you can see, this message looks somewhat familiar. The is not enabled part definitely looks familiar because when we ran show CDP earlier and it was not, not enabled, what did we get? CDP is not enabled. So same thing here with LLDP. So it's not enabled on either of our switches and we will take care of that right now with LLDP run. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it on our other switch and while we're at it, and give that table a little few, a few seconds to cook, if you will, and I'll show you the other options. We'll see the whole time in a moment is a little bit different than CDPs, but you can change that. I know we didn't do it in the CDP lab, and frankly, you're not gonna do it real often in the real world, but it's good to know that you can change that. You see the command LLDP run. Uh, I love rain it or reinit. <laughs> I like to call it ran it, but reinit, we're not gonna worry about that, or timer. Uh, of course, you could specify how often you want the packets to actually be sent. But again, you're not going to be doing a lot of fine-tuning with LLDP. Again, just always turn it on when you need it, and when you're leaving a client site, turn it off just like CDP. Let's go ahead and run show, let's actually go to the other switch, show LLDP neighbor. And here you go. Looks the same, look much the same, especially that row of information there on our one neighbor, but there's one important difference I want to point out to you. With show LLDP neighbor, the letter S stands for station. It does not stand for switch. That's what a B stands for. It's using the legacy term for switch, which is bridge. And you'll notice here we've got device ID, switch one, what we expect, the local interface that's directly connected to that device, the whole time, which is 120 seconds, Capability is set to B for bridge, which is our old, excuse me, legacy term for switch. And then finally, the port on the remote device to which we are connected. So you get much the same information. You just got to watch those capability codes. Now, let's see. Let's take a look at some details about our neighbor. And how are we going to do that? Show all DP neighbor details. Ah, got me. It's just detail. And you can see there's chassis ID, port ID at the top, etc. port description, system name, all good stuff to know, but then it's gonna give you a system description. If it's a Cisco device as this one is, it shows you what iOS is in use. And some interesting info that you didn't get with CDP, and that's system capabilities as compared to enabled capabilities. And that BR, of course, would indicate that this is capable of being a bridge switch and a router, but enabled capabilities are just B, because on a layer three switch, we have to turn IP routing on, and I don't have it on on that switch right now. So that's interesting stuff. We didn't see that with CDP. I also added a management address without telling you, so we'd have a management address to look at, but I did put 3111 on interface VLAN one on that switch, and you can see that was picked up as well. It also even tells you that auto negotiation is supported and enabled on that port and physical media capabilities. So LLDP does give you a lot of information, not quite the same as CDP, but very close as far as the detailed information goes. Now let's work with LLDP globally and at an interface level. And we'll run show LLDP with one P. Sometimes you just get momentum up, right? 
And this output again looks pretty familiar. We've got a new line there, status active. And we also see the advertisements are going out every 30 seconds. The hold time is advertised as 120 seconds. And the interface reinitialization delay is two seconds. So pretty much the same information there, especially with advertisements and hold time, even though the hold time value is different. I'll try not to mention that again. But there it is for global. But if you change things at an interface level, again, that's not going to show up here. And that's what I want to show you before we do a chart comparison of these two protocols. Because the thing is with the interface is that the options are a little bit different. There's no equivalent here to CDP enable. And even if I put no LLDP, I get the same choices. With LLDP, you have a little more control because you might want to receive the updates without transmitting them. So you could do no LLDP transmit here, and you wouldn't be sending LLDP packets on that interface, but you would continue to receive them. Hmm. So a little extra fine tuning there you know, you might want to do once in the proverbial blue moon. I did want to show you that, but again with LLDP, the important thing is we know if it's on, if it's off at a client site when you get there, you turn it on, turn it off when you leave, but that's it. And really that's all there is with LLDP. The commands are similar, the information is similar. Watch the difference on the interfaces and you will be gold. I did want to compare these two. And I made the chart extra big here, so let's slide that over. Quick reminders, Cisco proprietary, CDP is, LLDP is not. They both run at layer two. They both have a configurable hold time. CDPs is 180 and LLDPs I'm not going to mention again. Uh, you can configure them both globally to enable and disable with run and no run. you putting the protocol name in the middle, of course. And the interface level command for CDP is enable or no enable. And with LLDP, you are actually going to be able to decide whether you want to receive and or transmit just do one, both, or frankly, neither. So that is it for CDP and LLDP. Coming up next, we're going to talk about password recovery. And there is no one-size-fits-all solution for password recovery when it comes to Cisco routers, believe me. But we're going to do some general looking at it and talk about a real-world experience or two while we're at it. And that is coming up next.